Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be talking GR Corolla. Yep, I got one in my driveway, which I'm pretty excited about. However, it's been raining nonstop for weeks and weeks, and so I didn't do a drive impressions video yet, but uh, subscribe and that is coming. Um, but I am going to do a little walk around, and I'm also gonna talk about a couple things I've discovered about this car that I don't think you've heard in other people's channels yet. So. Stay tuned for that. And then also I want to give you guys my impression uh, as using it as a family vehicle and being a car enthusiast at the same time. So all that being said, let's get to it. So I think by now everybody kind of gets the stats of the car because it's been out for a little while now and the hype has been so large that everybody knows this has got 300 horsepower out of a 1.6 liter three cylinder motor with 274 foot pounds of torque. That's great. Uh, you also have, of course, all-wheel drive system with a LSD front and rear that allows you to do torque splits of either 60-40, 30-70, or a balanced 50-50, which is also great. Uh, and we'll be talking more about that stuff during the drive impressions video, which is coming soon. But the other thing is, again, this is a special car for a couple of different reasons. I, I really want to emphasize this because I know it says Corolla on the back. But this thing was built in a totally different plant than what the normal Corolla is built in. It's actually built in the same plant that the LFA was built, the A80 Supra, and uh, of course a lot of the Lexus cars that come off the line. And what does that mean? That means that special attention was placed on this particular vehicle to make sure that it is built well, and that is solid construction. 349 extra weld seams were actually included in this chassis so that the car feels great and that the suspension can actually be more effective. And so for those reasons, this is a special car. But saying all that and hearing 300 horsepower, I mean, you know, this is 2023. We have cars with double or in some cases almost triple that coming off of, uh, you know, right from the factory. So 300 horsepower is not a lot. But I think what this car's got going for it is the weight is also around 3,200 pounds, give or take. Uh, which by today's car standards is very light. So those are the stats. Now let's take a deeper look at what actually makes this car visually interesting um, because I think those subtle cues are something special to, to behold. And then also I got a couple of gripes I wanna share too. So let's take a look at those. All right, so first and foremost, we've got a vent right here. We've got a vent right there. And then of course you've got vents all through this front side. Uh, and guess what? Another vent right here. Lots of vents. The beauty here though, is that all the vents apparently do something. They're there for a reason. They are not just there for show. Now, you know, I, I say that because it's interesting to me that on the Supra, there's a lot of vents there too, but of course those don't do anything. So it's pretty cool that on this particular car, they made it with the intent of actually being built for performance. And if it's there, it should be there for a reason. I think that is the, the GR, the Gazoo Racing influence on this particular car. So I think it's worthy to mention that. This is another worthy mention, and I, I'm sorry guys that this car is pretty filthy right now, but all we've been getting is rain here in California, so it doesn't make sense to wash the car. But you can see up front here, we've got some pretty nice uh, looking brakes here. We've got a 14 inch rotor that's actually two piece, and we have a, a four pot uh, caliper, which is great with a GR logo on it. 
so you can get a good look at it there. And these are slotted, which is pretty nice. So these brakes are designed from the factory to give you some performance. And look, I mean, just for the fact that the rotor is two piece shows that they're thinking about heat management, which is great. The only thing which I, I, I'm not quite sure why manufacturers do this, but the car still has rubber uh, lines for the brake fluid. And I, I would love to see a manufacturer uh, come out with uh, steel braided just from the factory. That'd be pretty cool. But on the back, take a look over here. Right here, we still got some pretty nice brakes in the rear too. So you do have one pot in the rear, but these are 11 inch rotors and they are slotted as well. And both, it is worthy to mention that these wheels are actually uh, the same size. So this is a square setup and that's great for being at the track, driving it hard, rotating your tires uh, whenever you need to. Uh, and they are 235, 40, uh, ZR18s, which just means it's got an 18 inch rim, uh, and uh, obviously the sidewall is 40, but they are 235s, which is pretty cool, so relatively thick. Um, the Morizo edition comes with 240s, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I think it's 245 uh, rubber, which means this definitely has more, uh, more in it for some wide, wider tires if you ever want to go that way. And I mean, look, just based on where my hand is, like I can see. You know, there's definitely room, especially here if you want to lower the car at some point. I mean, you can kind of see like there's, I mean, there's a lot of room to play with. And I think this car lowered would look really, really nice. Um, and there you can kind of see tire thickness, of course. Pretty cool. Now, this wouldn't be a good walk around if I didn't also point out to you a couple things. Number one, this car is pretty wide. I mean, in the front, you can see how that fender is unique to this car and really pulls out from the normal um, Corolla. And then in the rear, it's just more obvious, right? So they've added this piece here to give it more style. And then that leads to the rear bumper, which creates the width. And because of the width from the flares, you also have to have this longer, wider side skirt, which I actually think is a really nice touch. However, a couple of little gripes, which is, I don't know why it's beeping at me right now. Okay, there we go. Um, but one gripe is, look how much body work <laughs> there is to cross over every time. I mean, maybe it doesn't look like that big a deal, but just look at all of these steps. I mean, it just, it's a lot. Like, and uh, so I find myself having to like, really be careful stepping in and out of the vehicle. So that way I don't scuff those. And you know, it's not a big deal, but I think for passengers who you might carry, who don't really care about your car, they're gonna totally scuff that up. So in case you're PPFing, that might be something to consider. So there is one more thing I want to talk about, which is, well, the rear seat. Um, because check this out. If you're a pro dad, like I am, well, there you go. You can see I'm running car seats, which is great, except for the fact that the rear door actually does not have a very good angle. I mean, this is, this might be a better way to see it. It's like, it only opens this far, which is like maybe 50 degrees. And I don't know, it's kind of tight when you look at it to get people in and out of, especially kids. And again, when you look at the body paneling here, I mean, this is definitely gonna get scuffed up by your kids for sure, 100%. And you know, that's a little, I don't know, a little disappointing, but I kind of get why. It's because here the door, as it opens, it almost touches onto that panel there. So I get why they had to limit it, but you know, it's just one of those things where it is a family car and it's a great one, especially if you're a car enthusiast, it's hard to find a combination like this, but that is a drawback that you should be aware of. Can we talk rear spoiler for a second? Um, I mean, look, I like the way the car looks, but that that top spoiler, man, it is just, it just looks so puny and sad. And I love the Circuit Edition spoiler, but at this point in time, even the Circuit Editions that have been uh, press cars that have been circling around, you probably notice in videos, they don't actually have the big spoiler on them either. So I know that those are supposed to be a dealer add-on. So meaning the car shows up like this at the dealership, and then on the Circuit Edition, it will be installed there 
So, okay, fine, but why are we stuck with this tiny little, I don't know, to me it's too stubby, and when you look at the profile of the car, I don't know, it, it kind of doesn't, it's not terrible, but it, it just kind of doesn't work for me. I really don't like it. Maybe this angle here will help illustrate what I'm saying, because when you look at it in its totality, you can see the bottom is all fat, and the top, I don't know. What do you guys think? So one interesting thing is, well, here's the emblem. And at the emblem, you actually have the backup camera right here. Uh, there's so many times I just kind of want to reach here to open the, the hatch, but actually that's down here. And as you can see, there's a button. Um, and uh, actually it's two buttons. This one on the left is to open. This one here actually locks your vehicle, so you can lock it and walk away, and it'll lock all the doors, which is nice. In terms of all the space, I mean, you do get some, some decent space. It's not a lot. It's probably your average trunk, but of course it's a hatch, which means these seats can drop down and then you get more room. Uh, the floor is raised up because you do have a battery in the back in this model because of weight distribution. So something to pay attention to, but hey, look, it's still a hatch. Who could forget the controversial three tip exhaust system? I mean, I don't know, is it okay? Maybe. I really think this would have looked better if they just had it as a Stinger exhaust with two tips in the middle. I think that would have been much better, would have looked better on the car as a whole. What do you guys think? Well, here is the business end of the car uh, in all its glory, right? You got your 1.6 liter three cylinder turbo. Turbo, of course, is in the back, so you can't really see that. Uh, but what you do see is here's the induction. And what's cool is this little mechanism right there. That actually is a flap a vacuum base that actually turns on and opens to let more air in at a high RPM. I think it's around 4,200 RPM. So that way the engine actually gets fed more air. I think that's pretty cool engineering, well thought out. And then over here, I think this is cool to point out but that little triangle right there, that little stamp, that right there is a show of quality. That means that the people who built this are proud of this motor and they are putting their stamp of approval on it and they obviously stand behind what they built. Uh, you know, of course you get one of the GR badges here. This doesn't have a lot of GR badges on it in my opinion, but well, I guess it kind of does. Like there's one right there and then under the hood, but um, you know, if this was an M car, there'd be M's everywhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, not too much to look at here, but I do think it's interesting. One thing about the hood prop here, which is sort of weird for me, is I don't like that this hood prop is part of the hood. Because <laughs> um, I could definitely see myself replacing this hood at some point. And uh, prop management might be an issue because, you know, you got to figure out if the aftermarket hood you go with or whatever has a slot for that or not. If it doesn't, I don't know, you gotta get creative. Maybe add some gas shocks or something. So there's more going on with this Corolla than just meets the eye. The interior, for example, requires a little bit of praise. I mean, sure, it is a basic Corolla interior for the most part, but it does have some GR appointments. And, you know, I think they've done a good job with some of the details like the crisp graphics and the instruments on the gauge cluster itself, I think are really uh, good for any enthusiast driver. The seats are cloth in this particular core, but they are cozy for daily driving and they do okay if you drive fast. I think on a track you'd want more, but they're not too bad. I think in general, all the touch points feel good and you, you get a lot for your money, I think, from technology perspective as well. And I love the fact that there's so many adjustments with the all-wheel drive system. I think that's really key. Other than that, I mean, look at the details. I like the way the buttons are recessed so that your knee doesn't hit them by accident like your rev match. And just in general, a great car to live with. Well, so there you have it. I mean, that's just a pretty good little walk around just to get more intimate with the car. Um, you know, look, I've, I've now been driving this for a month and I gotta tell you, it is a pretty satisfying car, especially once it's broken in, which, you know, oddly enough, I found that there was 
almost nobody who really knew what the break-in period should be on this thing. And after some research, looks like it's a thousand kilometers, which turns out to be about 621 miles. So, you know, I babied it under 4,000 RPMs for that amount of time. And now I drive it like I'm supposed to. And I love it. I mean, 300 horsepower, not a lot. But what's interesting is this is kind of a momentum car. Once you get going, even though it has some decent thrust, once you get going, this thing feels really fast. And I don't know, I mean, it, it, it's just got grip for days. I mean, look, it's raining already. You probably, I don't know if you could tell if it's raining now, but it's starting to come down again. In the rain, this thing is fantastic. It doesn't care. It really doesn't. I mean, these, these wheels just grip. Um, the suspension feels good. I mean, I'll give you more driving impressions soon, like I said, but I don't know. I mean, is this worth the hype? You know, look, if you are like me, a car enthusiast who wants something that's a great daily, who wants something that's decent on gas, um, and when I say decent, I mean, I'm averaging about 22 to 24 miles a gallon, just driving it normally. Uh, you could get probably closer to 30 if you just keep your foot out of the boost. You know, it's a great car. And then especially if you have a young family, um, I, I find it to be relatively perfect. I mean, it does everything you need it to, uh, and you can have a lot of fun. So for all those reasons, I'm pretty stoked on it. And, you know, I, I, think, I think it's worth the hype.